previewing the Jamaica Talawas for the Caribbean Premier League 2022. So the Jamaica Talawas, they were the first team to win the CPL when it started in 2013, ah. led by, of course, their talisman, Christopher Henry Gale, the universe boss. The Talawas, they, they then repeated um, winning the championship again. That was in 2016, led by, of course, Chris Gale as well. But since the departure of Chris Gale, 2017 and 2018, made it to the playoffs, but they didn't look threatening going forward. And then, of course, since then, 2019, it's been a, a downhill, downhill path for the Talawas. 2020, we saw Andre Russell making comments that he was going to leave the Talawas last year. They exited in the group stage and since then, it's just been a lot of stuff that we see going, going on and happening on the Talawas that has been affecting their performances. But nonetheless, let's have a look at their squad for this year and of course they retain their captain Rogman Powell. So Rogman Powell who led the Talawas in 2020 and 2021 he has been again left to do the captaincy for the third year in a row Rogman Powell will captain the Talawas all right so let's have a look at the squad that Rogman has so it's Rogman Powell Fabian Allen Finally leaving the Patriots to go to the Talawas, Raymond Reefer, Amir Jangu, Sandeep Lamichani, Shamar Springer, Chris Green, Imaru Wazim, Brandon King, Shamar Brooks, Miguel Pretorius, Kenar Lewis, Mohamed Amir, Kurt McKenzie, Jamie Merchant, and Nicholas Gordon. So we realize the Talawas, they have a squad and when you look at their squad, you don't see anyone that really sticks out and just grab it to say, mm, this is the man who's going to, you know, demoralize opposition. When you look at it, the only thing you see is that Andre Russell is missing. Yes, Andre Russell is not going to be with the Talawas this year. So let's look at players to watch out for with the bat. Yes, Brandon King is leaving the Amazon Warriors to come and play for the Talawas now, but King hasn't delivered that consistency that I would like and so the player that I'm going to say we need to look out for with the bat for the Talawas is Shamar Brooks. Shamar Brooks last year he was with the Talawas he was batting at number five so Shamar Brooks he played nine match 214 runs average 30 healthy average at five but the only issue with Brooks is was his strike rate. Now I don't mind his strike rate being 118 because I would like Brooks to play that anchor role in this Talawa setup. So Brooks is going to be the person who's going to, you know, just play that anchoring innings because King, not necessarily the most consistent person in CPL history. Kenar Lewis, very aggressive at the top, but hasn't really given us that consistency. Rob Manpola has had a couple of not so impressive CPL and then their batting is very thin, so Shamar Brooks will have to stand up and be the man. I don't think they can play him at five this year. You will have to bat further up the order, or maybe at the top of the order. The next person to look out for for me is Fabian Allen. Fabian Allen, so far, he's been with the Patriots, and so he's playing as an all-rounder and a finisher. But the thing about it was that Allen, he had company, he had the likes of Dwayne Bravo to help him finish game for Patriots. Um, Sherfield Rutherford batting at four and five sometimes. And pretty much in our Patriots team last year, he didn't he didn't have to do the finishing role, pretty much being the lead finisher. He didn't have that pressure. But in this Talawa setup, I think Fabian Allen, he is the quote-unquote like-for-like replacement for Andre Russell. There's no Carlos Brackley there anymore and so Allen is going to feel the pressure to be the main finisher for the Talawas. He's the one that you're going to expect to explode in the last five overs. Ah. So you look at his CPL career, he has shown glimpses of it. Average is 29.6, 474 runs and most importantly that strike rate 162.3 wow. I remember he played a brilliant innings he played a brilliant innings versus Barbados back in 2018 
So in 2018, the Patriots, they were all at sea against Barbados. Evan Lewis gone, Chris Gale gone, and Devon Thomas gone. At the time, Devon Thomas was in superb form, and Thomas gone, Antoine Devsich gone. And so, Allen had to be the man to stand up and play a beautiful innings. The Patriots needed something like 8 yards to win from 42 deliveries. And Allen played a, a one-man innings. And so, Fabian Allen, the finisher, will be needed in this Talawas team. Now, looking at their bowling, you look at their bowling, you, you see a couple of debutants, the CPL, the off-spinner Jamie Merchant and the seaman Nicholas Gordon. Of course, we see the South African Miguel Pretorius who's going to assist in the death overs, but the lead strike bowler, I would say, has to be Mohamed Amir. Mohamed Amir, the Pakistani, very experienced with the new ball, and with this inexperienced bowling attack, you expect Amir will be the man to lead the charge. I expect Amir to he will have to pull his weight and of course do great things with the new ball. He's going to have to get a lot of wickets up in the power play to just set the tone a little bit easier for these debutants. So when you look at Amir in CPL last year, he played 7 match, economy of 6.12 and his economy is this low because of how well he bowls in the power play. He gets majority of his wickets in the power play and so Amir, you can expect him to be bowling 3 overs up front and then save an over for him in the back end or in the middle phase of the game. So Amir is expected to lead this Talawas attack. And then the next bowler to look out for has to be the leg spinner, Sandeep Lamechan. He's back to the Talawas in CPL 2020. Remember when it was in Trinidad, 11 matches, 12 wickets, economy 5.27. Now, the last time Lamechani was bowling in tandem with Muji, and so even though he was only getting one wicket a game, Muji was attacking from the other end, and Muji was getting a lot of wickets. Now, Lamechani doesn't have that luxury. So, he'll be bowling in tandem maybe with a Jamie Merchant, or if it's a Seema, Miguel Pretorius, or another spinner, Imad Wazim, he won't have that luxury. It won't be a world-class spinner, spinner of the caliber of Mujib and so I think Lamichani will have to not only have such a good economy but he's gonna have to be, step up to be the main spinner to be taking lots of wickets. Wow! So looking at the Talawa squad I'm making my potential starting 11. I looked at it and remember only four overseas player can start. Four overseas player per team right and so one of these overseas players is going to be left out and I thought Imad Wazi, Miguel Pretorius, Chris Green, who will the Talawas most likely leave out? So let me just go through the top of, top of the order. I would have Kenar Lewis to open the batting with Brandon King. Brandon King and Kenar, some persons might want to see Shamar Brooks at the top because he has been opening for West Indies but I would want Shamar Brooks at three allow King and Lewis to maximize the power play and if it doesn't come off Brooks the more controlled batsman he can bat at three and anchor the team so I'd like Brooks to bat at three it doesn't matter if he's striking at a hundred Brooks can play at three in this team because I think this team is very susceptible to collapsing um, Rovman Powell at four the skipper at five Raymond Reefer um, he's very underrated, Raymond Reefer. He's played a lot of cameos for Barbados, even in the CPL 2019 when they won it. So he's very underutilized. I'd love to see the Talawas make the most of him with the bat and with the ball. Utilize Raymond Reefer well, and the Talawas could be very competitive. Fa Fabian Allen at six, the finisher. Imad Wazim at seven. Miguel Pretorius, he's going to have to do, he's going to be the main bowler at the death over stage of the game so he'll play Nicholas Gordon, Mohamed Amir and Jamie Merchant the off spinner so two debutants in my starting 11 which means that Chris Green is the overseas player that more than likely will be left out. Looking at my first choice 11 you realize one thing about the Talawas is they don't have they're just missing that firepower when you look at it, King has done well in CPL in 2019, but hasn't been that consistent. 
You look, Powell hasn't really been in the best of form in the Caribbean Premier League and the middle order looks thin. It doesn't have that power. I know Fabian Allen is there, but it's just missing the big name, Russell or Bradley. And so for me, what are my predictions for the title was? Well, looking at the venues and where they'll play, that's a big part of it. Um, majority of their games will be, they have seven games that is between St. Kitts, St. Lucia and Queen's Park in Trinidad. So they get to play majority of their games on surfaces that won't have as much spin because we know the Talawas, they don't play spin that well. But in all honesty, looking at this team, I would honestly say that I would expect them to not make the playoffs. So they're one of the teams I expect that they won't make the playoffs. One of two teams that is going to fall by the wayside and Many persons, you may agree, you may not agree. So tell me what you agree with, with what I would have stated. Tell me what would be your starting 11 and what you would want to see from the Talawa so that they'll be very competitive to try to push for a CPL victory. Um, as I said, I think they'll be one of the teams to get an early exit, but that's my opinion. You can state yours and let me know. I do hope you enjoyed this video of the Talawa's preview. Thank you. It is Ronaldo and I am out. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.